Hi, I'm Jennifer Sir. Welcome to The Sewing Room and our Jobs in Fashion series. Today, we're speaking about the job of fashion photographer with photographer Matt Beard. I'm really excited to hear about what this job is all about and what his journey's been. So without further ado, here's Matt. <laughs> um, welcome to The Sewing Room. It's so nice to have you here, Matt. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So today we're going to talk about the job of fashion photographer. And can you tell us a little bit about your journey to becoming a fashion photographer and what you're up to now? Uh, sure. I started off in photography back in high school, back in the um, late 1980s. It's been quite a while. It's been a journey back when film was still a thing, um, pre-digital. And uh, I actually wanted to get into advertising and um, marketing first. I was uh, really wanted to make commercials and music videos and, and just create silly slogans. That was my thing. That was back when I was about 19 years old. Um, so what I did was I actually had uh, moved to Colorado when I was about 19 and tried to get a job at an ad agency. And when I got to the ad agency, I only had a hand-drawn portfolio, like stick figures with ideas. And um, although they said they liked the ideas, they needed something a little bit more polished. And they suggested I go and hire a photographer and put a portfolio together and then come back and, and show them. So uh, being 19 and broke at the time, I decided I would um, move back to LA, go to community college and kind of refine photography, which I, I had started doing back in high school, but never really thought of it as a career. Um, because I, I realized how expensive it was to hire photographers and that was something I couldn't afford. So I figured I'd, I'd teach myself how to do it and shoot my own advertising portfolio. Uh, started going to Santa Monica College uh, at the time because it's what I could afford, but little be known to me, it was actually one of the best photography schools in California at the time. It was a community college, but it was run by all working professional photographers that were kind of doing it on the side, but still worked in the industry. So they were up to date on all of the current photography trends, all the current equipment, um, techniques, everything. And they were really passionate about what they were doing because they were still doing it for a living as well as teaching. Uh, so luckily I had really good um, education and mentors from the school. Uh, and as I was going to school, I started working as an assistant for other photographers who would come in looking for people to help. So my journey kind of took a, a hard left turn when I started assisting photographers in the industry. Um, I started realizing that the, um, the job I wanted in advertising was constantly shifting. Uh, later in life, I would see the same people doing the same job I wanted to do. They would work, they'd get laid off, they'd be looking for another work, get laid off, keep going. It was like a never ending cycle. And they were wow. constantly stressed out. And here I was working with these photographers as an assistant and uh, one led to another, to another. Uh, we started traveling the world. It was all expenses paid. And you know, I never knew where my job was gonna come from. So it was kind of like almost the same as the job I would have been in thinking it was steady. I knew that this one wasn't, but it was something different all the time. So over the years, I started working with about 150 different photographers uh, traveling all over. And I decided, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll stick with this for a while. And uh, it was something that came naturally as well. So I, I really enjoyed the process. Um, luckily, early in the career, I started working with a, a fashion photographer named Philip Dixon, who is based in Venice. Um, he's one of those really old school guys, like back in the, even before, like the, the Herb Ritz days and the, um, like the iconic photographers of that time. But he was also very, uh, he wasn't very flashy. Like he never did books. Um, he didn't like public, he didn't like the eye on him publicly. Right. So he wasn't out there as much, uh, but he was one of the best photographers I've ever worked with. The guy was just insane genius when it came to photography. So luckily I was able to learn a lot of techniques uh, from him and what to do and what not to do in the business. Um, and also about fashion. Like it was funny because he used to tell me he hated doing fashion and he would just 
the clothes he would wear is he would wear almost like a robe. He would stick it in the washing machine, stick it in the dryer and put it back on. That was his whole uh, wardrobe closet was washing machine, dryer, wear it, washing machine, dryer, wear it. <laughs> you know, he had one, uh, he had a clothing rack in his studio that he would use for the models, but he would hang some of his clothes on there, like his, his pants or whatever, <laughs> every now and then. But he loved to photograph fashion. He loved arranging things and styling it. Even though he wasn't very into fashion himself, he had the eye for what looked good on the models and what and how to show the client's product. And um, I learned a lot from him as to, you know, not necessarily needing to, um, as a photographer, be too concerned about what brands are doing all the time because it changes so quickly in the fashion industry. There's right. always something new. It's basically about how to show what the designer is trying to get across in the images. Right. Yeah. And really, yeah, yeah show the clothing. Um, That's a really good um, skill to have too, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it's, yeah, there's, it's, it's a weird process, but it's a, there's an art to fashion photography. It's a lot different than a lot of other types of photography. So what kind of photography are you doing most now in the fashion, in the fashion realm? Is it, is it video? Is it still print, um, advertising? Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of evolved over the last few years and it's become a mix of stills and video. Mm -hmm. uh social media is a huge thing right now um i mean it, it's been for quite a while but now that's pretty much there's always a social media element involved which usually uh concerns motion so in addition to shooting stills which we need to do for e-commerce uh for print for advertising we also shoot a lot of video and composite that into like tiktok videos instagram videos youtube videos um and videos for a website as like background videos that can play on the website Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of all encompassing. <laughs> it's a lot more work now than it was. Yeah. It seems like it. Um, yeah. That was my next question is what are the different kinds of photography that you do now, but it sounds like you do it all. <laughs> yeah. So in the fashion industry, I was working, um, I was working for a long time with lucky brand and, um, we were shooting everything for them, everything from e-commerce to, um, the catalog stuff to the wholesale swimwear, um, plus size kids, uh, the retail wholesale, um, everything pretty much and doing all of the retouching. And it, it was interesting to see how much, um, how much budget and effort were put into different aspects of it, right. which, yeah, which is kind of, I, I never could quite understand that part of photography which has always been a mystery to me that a lot less budget is put into the e-commerce side even though that's what actually is what you see when you're clicking that buy button to purchase something online right. and it's 80 percent of most of the company sales at least it was at lucky when i was there 80 percent of the sales were e-com 20 percent were store uh, and other but the huge budgets were put into the advertising the campaigns that you would see like yeah, right. billboards, magazines, things like that, which I guess would draw the people to Lucky Brand to the website. Right. It was more of a brand, a brand photography as as opposed to catalog. Right. Like right. e-commerce is very specific. You want to show the clothing. Um, so it's it's very easy to zoom in and see the different fabric and texture and the stitching and how it fits on the models, as opposed to something lifestyle where sometimes I mean, I remember the, the old Joe's jeans campaign. I don't know if you ever saw those where it was basically just like it, it they didn't shoot it nude, but it just looked like a nude profile of a woman uh, <laughs> of her behind. They actually shot it in the studio that I used to manage and they did it with like a G string and retouched everything out. But uh, yeah, that was, you know, old, was it? <laughs> old jeans commercial. And I think, I don't know if it was a Calvin Klein's or maybe it was Joe's. They, I remember maybe it was Levi's actually it was so long ago. They just had like a um, a nude behind, and then they uh, like sharpied a pocket on the back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, advertising. It's a totally different. Um, yeah. Yeah. Totally different ball of wax. Yeah, but that's where the larger budgets are, and that's what most fashion photographers want to do. So they'll do a lot of editorial for magazines where they can shoot editorially, and then they get picked up for the campaigns. But the, the hard work for photography is really in the e-commerce side. I've seen that. And that's, uh, 
it's nonstop all day long, constantly. And it's, it's work. It's the grunt work for sure. And is there, is there much creativity involved with that? Or is it mostly just mm, sometimes <laughs> <laughs> you have to find creative ways to solve problems in that side. So it, it's less visually creative and more technically creative to, to get the workflow going. Um, we developed a process after a while with Lucky because before we came in there, they were shooting some things on white background, some things on gray, some things on beige. And when you lay everything out on a page, it looks all over the place. Is, there's no consistency to it. The lighting was different. The, um, the contrast between shots were different because they had different photographers shooting it. Oh, right. So Yeah, so once we brought everything in, we figured out kind of what looked best and what sold best. Uh, because with e-commerce, you can... You can track basically what people are looking at and, and what is, what's more desirable to the consumer. So once they figured that part out, we said, okay, we're shooting everything on white at this point, which makes it easier. Right. Um, and shooting them in very specific angles and looks and specific models that they liked that were actually, it's easier to sell clothes that are on figure photograph than it is uh, lay flat. Right. Without. And they figured that out because we used to do both. And um yeah, so they were able to kind of get the budgets up, get better models. Uh, we could get better lighting and, and get it more consistent and then develop the workflow so we would get through, you know, 80 different outfits in a day, every day. Wow, that's yeah. that's a lot. That's a lot of shooting. Oh, yeah. That's quick. That's yeah. super quick. My husband's a photographer, so I, I understand what yeah, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> is and how 80 is a lot. 80 is a lot. Uh, when we do swimwear, too, with um, Lunata Bay that used to design swimwear for Lucky Brand, as well as a lot of other ones. Um, yeah, we've done shots up to almost 100 outfit changes in a day, but it's swimwear, so it's very fast. And it's not just one model, right? One, like one model. <laughs> <laughs> one model <laughs> we wow. we timed this model how fast she could get changed and she was less than five seconds she could change her swimwear it was oh amazing we'd that... shoot her she'd run off set we'd go one one thousand two one thousand <laughs> three one thousand four she's back on set ready to go <laughs> and shoot again it was yeah. amazing they're they're amazing professionals actually models are <laughs> oh yeah and it's much different working with a professional model than it is with someone who's not professional. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. It's a huge difference. Yeah. The, the irony and the funny thing was, I remember asking her, I said, you know, when you go, um, she was talking about going shopping with her boyfriend at one point, And I asked her, I said, when you go shopping with your boyfriend, do you change like really quick? She's like, oh no, he, I drive him crazy. I'm in there all day. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but you're so fast here. She's like, yeah, that's a different story. Yeah. That's work. <laughs> yeah. That's totally different. Dif different thing when you're shopping for yourself. Yeah, um, exactly. So I've heard you say we a couple of times. How many people does it take to do what you do? Oh, it depends on the job. Um, and the way I see it, it's always a, a group effort. It's a team effort because if it's, even if it's me by myself shooting, I'm shooting somebody or something. So it's never just me alone unless I'm going out and shooting personal projects like flowers or something like that. Um, yeah, so the majority of the time I always refer to it as we because there's always more than just myself involved. Um, when I shoot for Cirque du Soleil, which we've been doing for quite a while, uh, I have a co-shooter that I work with and um, it allows us to be in two places at once because sometimes we'll only have one opportunity to shoot live performances. And in order to get the best um, variety and angles and also have a backup in case I miss something, he's able to get it, um, you know, we do that. Um, when it comes to doing an e-commerce shoot, uh, like for Lucky, for example, it was uh, myself, a digital tech, I would have two assistants, and we had an on-site retoucher as well. In addition to that, we would have the wardrobe stylist with their assistant, makeup artist and their assistant, um, the clients, usually two of them, and sometimes like a PA. So, I mean, it, it'll vary anywhere from two to 20 people on set. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's and that's cool. not including the models. Right. <laughs> so. not including models. And um, when you worked for Lucky, was that like a contract job or were you on their staff? Like uh, freelance. freelance, always freelance. Yeah, always freelance. I don't think I've ever done any contract. I have my own S corporation that I'm an employee of. Mm -hmm. So I work for my own company, um, but I'm not contracted with any other companies. It's all freelance. Cool. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question and it's probably going to take you a long time to answer, or you're going to say, 
uh, multiple different things, but what does your typical day look like? Uh, photography in itself, I'm going to get a little bit more generalized. Um, it's usually about 90% paperwork and running around and about 10% shooting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the majority of it is, uh, well, I'll give you an example. My last, the last job I just did, um, last Friday, I flew to, what time of day was it actually? I'm trying to think. I did an overnight flight to New York. Um, we got in, we photographed inside a, um, Actually, no, it was a it was an early morning flight, got there in the evening, um, met up with a, a DP that I'd hired to do the video side. Uh, we were shooting for a security guard company at a um, the Barclays Center in in Brooklyn at a boxing match. Um, so we flew in, met with the clients. Uh, next morning, we went in, uh, shot all day long, left there at about one o'clock in the morning, um, packed up. And at four in the morning, I flew back to L.A. And yeah. And in between, <laughs> in between leaving and flying back to LA, you get a text from the client like, hey, did you see the news? And it turned out there was like a big, like a bunch of fights broke out and there was somebody, they thought there was a shooting in front and everybody rushed back in and broke through the glass and came inside and mobbed the entire place. And yeah, luckily we had gotten out just before that. And yeah. It turned out to be a false alarm, but it was just wow. mass panic. Um, but yeah, it was like leave Friday, shoot Saturday, come back Sunday. Um, and some jobs are like that. So my typical day, I wake up, I make coffee, I make a list of all the things that I'm supposed to do during the day. And then suddenly I'll start getting emails and phone calls and my list kind of gets put aside as I start answering and replying and remembering more and more things that I have to kind of take care of and finish. And then slowly through the day, I'll get through all of that. And um, that's on non-shoot days. Shoot days, uh, I'm pretty much just focused on the shoot. So I'll get up in the morning, get to my location, get set up, shoot everything, get back home, back up all the files and go to sleep and then wake up the next day and start over. Again. Unless I actually have other deadlines for other projects where I'm up retouching sometimes. Um, and, do you do and your own retouching or do you hire people to do that? Majority of it I do myself, probably about 90%. So wow. there, yeah, there's some things that I outsource, uh, but mostly I do it myself. Wow. Yeah. And I have some projects I'm working on now for um, Henkel for Schwarzkopf. It's a hair company. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing a whole campaign on a new like uh, lightning thing that they have. It's like a level 10 highlights and all that's coming out pretty soon in the stores. Uh, we're, I'm doing a lot of retouching on that. So I'm pulling a lot of all-nighters. <laughs> Let's just say wow. this. I do a lot of all-nighters and there's very little sleep involved with what I do. Wow. So, yeah. I still enjoy it, but well, that's good. Not for everybody. Yeah. That's for sure. I'm glad you enjoy it. You can keep up with that schedule. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you find work as a photographer? Um, do you have a rep or is it purely from your website and referrals? How does that work? Uh, I do have a rep, but I would say probably 99% of my jobs come from word of mouth. Cool. So, yeah, I've been in the business for a while and, and usually one job leads to another, to another, to another. That's great. Yeah, that's that's how it should be. Right. <laughs> that's that's how it is. Usually it's kind of um, I don't want to sound too cliche, but it, it's like who, you know, in the business. But then it's also about not burning your bridges and about really, you know, enjoying what you do and and having a good time doing it. Then everybody enjoys it. And that that shows, you know, if you if you don't enjoy it. What's the point? I mean, what are you working for at that point? Exactly. Um, do you have a preference for studio photography or um, location work? Depends if it's raining, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I like I like them both equally. Um, I've built photo studios, um, and I love being on location as well. Um, I love traveling too. So, do you have your own photo studio, or do you rent studios per shoot? for whatever it is that you're working on? Uh, between 2006 and 2010, I managed a studio and then I built a studio in Hollywood. So I had my own studio space. Mm -hmm. uh, the studio is still there. It's called, now it's called Wick Studios and it's on the corner of Sunset and Highland. And it's still available as a rental studio. Um, and it's great. It's got daylight and everything and beautiful place. But I sold my stake in it in 2010 so I could spend more time with my kids and just work from home. 
and just went freelance. And so now whenever we need a space, we will either rent it or um, shoot on location. So usually we're always renting or finding a spot. Interesting. Yeah, there may be one coming up in the future soon. We'll see. I've been, <laughs> I've been considering it once again, so we'll see. Okay, and finally, are there any special skills you have or have had to cultivate um, that were crucial to your success? Yeah, actually, um, aside from learning the technical side of photography, it's um, it has a lot, I think, to do with um, cultivating people skills. Um, I've been out to dinners with clients and that we've developed a relationship over the years and become friends and they, they have asked questions to me, things like, so what's like, what's the worst shoot you've ever been on? Or what's the most horrible? And when I asked them the same question, I was like, what is the worst shoot you've been on? And they would tell me. And it always boiled down to a personality conflict with them and the photographer. Mm -hmm. Never the photographer's work, because these are some of the best photographers in the world that they're talking about that they've worked with, but their personalities conflict. Um, there's a lot of ego involved with it. I think especially in, in fashion and sometimes, I guess, music somewhat, it depends. It depends on what level, celebrity, things like that. There's a lots, of, lots of ego and image and things like that that people um, become more concerned about rather than really paying attention to the people that they're working with and, and making sure that everybody's needs are met on set um, as, as well as their own. Um, but, and, and forgetting that it's a team effort to get everything done. When it becomes all about me, 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 and not about we, um, that's when people start to get a little bit kind of turned off. And so the clients would tell me things like the photographer only wanted to do things their way. And although it looked good, it wasn't what they needed because they have a boss that's telling them what they are supposed to be getting. They're saying, we need to shoot horizontal. We have a layout that's like this, that has to go on the website. And the photographer's like, no, this only looks good vertical. I'm only shooting vertical. Then they get it back. They're like, these are great looking vertical photos, but we can't use them for what we were hired to actually do. Right. And it, it's like, they're, yeah, they, it's, it's very strange. It's unfathomable. There's like crazy stories I've heard about things like that. And also how the photographers interact with models and, um, and other people. I've heard some, some horror stories about certain photographers and, and people that, uh, yeah what the whole me too movement was about and these guys shouldn't be working but they were at the time and hopefully yeah. they're not anymore i don't know I, I don't really pay attention to them very much but i remember hearing these stories and it's just yeah it's, yeah, it's so people skills definitely you're here skills. for professionalism right oh yes yes yeah. please <laughs> stay professional yeah, think, you stay working <laughs> yeah i think i think maybe we need more classes on professionalism and how to present yourself and be be a part of a team because I don't think it's something that you you necessarily learn. Um, but it would be a good entry into any sort of job that you were getting as a sort of entry into the culture of the business. You know, here's how we're going to treat each other. <laughs> yeah, you know what's interesting is um, there's a gentleman named Woody Flowers who um, he had a lot to do with the first robotics competitions. Uh, my, my kids are inside, they're in robotics right now. And what he brought to the, the whole tournament was the idea of gracious professionalism. Mm -hmm. And that's what they embody and they teach all the kids to practice gracious professionalism. And the way that they set up the competitions is they're actually called cooperation. So it's not people competing against each other constantly. The teams will have to switch off and work together against other teams and then they have to switch off and work together again so it's in their best interest to try to help the other teams as well as themselves and not to because they're going to end up working with that team eventually anyways so gracious professionalism it's a it's a thing that kids are being taught now that i don't think was always taught wow. so it's, it's a good thing that's brilliant <laughs> yeah woody flowers smart guy wow well, Matt, thank you so much for being here today. It's been really nice talking with you and learning more about um, the job of a fashion photographer and what that means. Um, so thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. I want to get a conversation with Matt. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you're interested in learning more about our fashion studies program, please visit our website at the
backlash fashion hidden studies. And also, while you're at it, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps.